Good morning, it's Amy and Tim from Go With Less. Today finds us leaving Prague on the bus and coming into Berlin. So pretty much all we talk about today is the, the bus adventure here, how that went, and also when we got here, how we purchased uh, the, uh, the metro tickets when we were here. Uh, we also talked. Yes, it was trickier than I've ever seen in any public in any city's public transportation. It was. We show you around our room, and then some things that aren't in the video. Was, um, we went out for dinner. We went to the grocery store last night. So we had a sort of a slow day yesterday. But uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hope you like what you see. Yeah. Hi, it's Amy and Tim, and we are on Flixbus number three. We are leaving beautiful Prague, and we are heading to Berlin. Yep, and so uh, we just wanted to make some notes about this particular bus. So this is the nicest bus we've been on, so it's just a newer bus, and so I don't know that it's made a huge difference, but also it, it was on time, and so that's been our experience with all the buses so far in terms of showing up on time and departing on time. Our arrival into Prague was a little bit delayed, so I think it minutes. was 45 minutes, and that was due to traffic, so on and, our way rain. over from... Uh, Construction and rain. Yeah. It, it, yeah. So it was a little bit late coming in, and we've heard from other travelers that sometimes Flixbus isn't on time, but they usually communicate through through email. email. I don't have any no. email unless I'm on Wi-Fi, and uh, I'm the one who booked most of these trips. So if we did get an email, we wouldn't even know it. Uh, but anyway, so here we are in the Flixbus. One thing uh, that we've learned, first of all, is that we number one, we're going to have really crappy food when we're doing. This is a four-hour bus ride, so we left our hotel about an hour before the bus. We walked over. So that's lesson number two. Lesson number one is you're going to get crappy food at the bus station. We already know this, but we're carrying more than we should be carrying. Bus station food. Yeah, bus station food sucks. And so, at least in Europe. As a matter of fact, I've never, I don't know that I've ever seen bus station food be anything other than super We've crappy. We've had a lot of it. Yeah, so we get like basically some version of like a grocery store sandwich, which is about as good as it's it sounds. It's a notch up from Subway. Um, I don't know about that. It, I don't like Subway either, but it's, it's it's like unhealthy and not good. And so, but that is what it is, and we're just rolling with the punches. The second thing is that we walked about a mile and a half with our heavy bags, and the back, I have the backpack for most of the way on my back until we switch. We have roller bags, and we put our I, I but put my But we have different. Bag. There's two different kinds of roller bags. There's the roller bags that you can do upright, and there's the roller bags that like weigh a lot. Two wheels versus four wheels. Ours we have the two, two wheel wheels. Variety. We need to upgrade our situation for the next time we do this. Yeah. Um, but my back is so I realize I am not with this setup so we walk all the time with our luggage but with this setup and with I had to bring my laptop with me which is lightweight and small but it's still added to everything else for nine weeks so um, so that means that my backpack is heavy and uh, so over a mile and I am taking either public transportation or something else and we considered actual backpacks for the trip so that's sort of the traditional backpacking across Europe yeah. and uh, we were advised against that by a variety of people and some people actually encourage us to have backpacks so I actually had back surgery a few years ago, and so having something on my back, especially the amount of baggage that we have, just didn't seem like a smart idea. And so even rolling our two-wheel bag isn't ideal. I think having four wheels would be better, but it's, it's okay rolling down the cobblestone streets. It's stronger streets. than I am. It's I am. Cobblestone streets, long distances, it's not ideal. Or, like, or like a mile and a half. But a is backpack, two, it's, as, it doesn't sound like a lot, piece but it's of luggage a lot. would not have been appropriate for no. us to have. So here we go. We're off to Berlin. We will update soon as soon as we get there. Yeah. Hi, we made our way to Berlin on our Flix bus, and so we're going to give you a quick review of our bus ride. So our bus was delayed by 30 minutes overall. Uh, when we crossed the border into Germany, 15 minutes of that delay was from police boarding the bus and checking our identification. They were checking our passports when we crossed the border. So whenever, we, whenever that happened, one of the guys on the bus, his passport was in his bag underneath the bus, and so he had to go drag his bag off the bus and find his passport. So something good to know is that you want to make sure and have your identification with you on the bus so you're not the guy that's causing the bus to be delayed another 15 minutes. But anyway, so our overall bus ride was delayed by 30 minutes, so we we're in Berlin a little later than we thought we were going to be. The ride overall was, was fine, so I used the bathroom and it was clean and it, was, it didn't smell quite like the last one. They made an announcement on this ride that they haven't made on the other rides, and that was that um, there is food and drink available, that the bus driver is selling food and drink. Uh, I don't know how that would happen, considering he's driving the bus. Also, um, nobody on the bus got up to take advantage of this offer. However, there seemed to potentially be food and drink available on this particular uh, Flix bus uh, ride. Um, the temperature on the bus was fine. We had charging just fine. This was the nicest of the Flix buses that we've been on so far, just in terms of the age of the bus. So all of them have been fine, but this one seemed to be a little bit newer. There was also normal electrical outlets, the European style outlets, available to plug in an electrical device other than a USB charging port like we've seen on all of our other buses. 
So it was a nice trip. So we. Uh, internet was slow, it was really uh, virtually unusable, so it would kind of come and go, but we had a little bit of internet uh, throughout the trip. As a matter of fact, I looked up back um, in one of the cities we were in before what the situation was going to be here for getting around within Berlin, so using the subway system, the rail system that's within the city. So there's the S-Bahn and there's the U-Bahn. Um, I think there's a, one other designation, but th those are the two things that we're going to be taking advantage of while, while we're in the city. And so uh, I, ha I, I thought I knew how to purchase those when we showed up here. I knew what I wanted to purchase, but going to the kiosk to make a purchase was a little bit more challenging than we thought it was going to be. It took us five minutes to figure it out, but we did figure it out. And so we bought so these the tickets. the reason why kiosk. is because you knew what you wanted. That's right. If you didn't I know knew what it, you wanted, I you knew would exactly have no idea. What, what I wanted. And even knowing what I wanted, it was very confusing at the kiosk to make even a purchase. Even in English. Even in English, that's right. So they have about four or five languages available at the kiosk. And even once I picked English, and it's still knew what you very, were and knew what I was buying. <laughs> it was we, still this was harder very than confusing. Other cities, I am convinced that these are going to work and that I did purchase the right thing. However, figuring that out was a little challenging, even with all the information that we had. Also, something that's important to note, so Amy and I both have a card that has a pen, and so some of, some of the credit cards from the States, you can actually, there are only a handful of these that are available, at least that we've experienced. And so we both have a Barclay card, which has a pen that's enabled when you're here in Europe. And so if you're gonna go to a kiosk and you're gonna buy something that requires a pen, the Barclay card that we have, uh, the Arrival Plus actually offers that benefit. Unfortunately for me, I don't know the pin to my card, or I thought I did, and it didn't work the last time I used it. Amy does know her pin, and so we tried to use a card in the kiosk uh, to make a purchase that was penless. It's not pin enabled. It did not work, so we had to have a pin enabled card to make a purchase at the kiosk. There is a line at the ticket office, so we could have gone in there and probably waited 15 or 20 minutes to purchase tickets with a person using our other credit card. But if we wanted to make a purchase at the kiosk, uh, we needed a pin enabled card, which we were able to successfully use uh, that and, and make that happen. And so um, we'll give you some more information about the, what, what these options look like later. Um, but so far we're ready to go and we're gonna go hop on our bus and go to our hotel. Hi, we just showed up here at our hotel room in Berlin. We are staying at the Hotel Cosmo Berlin. And uh, it is in a neighborhood called Mitte, which I understand is it means middle. And so hopefully we're going to be in the middle of things. This is a, a Marriott property. And so we booked uh, for five nights. And so if you book for four nights, you get the fifth night free. And we're taking if advantage of that. If you pay with points. If you pay with points. That's exactly right. And we pay with points. Amy found a great redemption. So we're, uh, by the way, this is on the former East German side of Berlin. We just got here, so we know nothing about what the neighborhood's going to be like, but I'm sure it's going to be fine. Our room is very nice. It's air conditioned, which we're excited to have air conditioning. Um, and we're going to show you around the room. So this is our nice bed. This is a Evian water. That was our welcome gift. I have some status with Marriott, and so uh, we don't have free breakfast and some of the things you might get if you have some status, but we did get a bottle of Evian water. Also wanted to show you the window. This is interesting in that the blinds are on the outside of the window. So just thought that was curious we'd show you that. Also wanted to show you that we got a little fridge here, so in a nice safe. So those are nice perks that come with a hotel room versus an Airbnb. So we're gonna take you to the bathroom here. So a little tight in here, but perfectly fine space. So here's a nice shower, fancy toilet, and uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. So there you have it. We had a couple of really late nights, our last two nights in Prague. So we called it a night early yesterday. We thought we'd hit the ground running with a four mile walking tour. We probably did about two miles, visited Galerie Lafayette, um, had a, our little Chipotle-like meal, went to the grocery store and, and went to bed kind of early. Yep, also commented about the air conditioning in the room, thought it was gonna be great. Last night it wasn't so great, so we still haven't exactly figured out how the air conditioning works. very complex. Works. Uh, they said there are pipes that run through the wall. I, I don't know, it was comfortable when we walked in the room. They cool it wasn't the comfortable room. in the middle of the night, so something's going on there. Also something of interest, remember the little blinds I showed you uh, when we first got into the room? So there's a remote control that actually makes those r blinds r lower or raise uh, based upon the buttons you push. And so something And it's else on the thermostat. Out. Yeah, it's weird. So our thermostat doesn't seem to control the air conditioning, but it, it does, does control, control the blinds. The blinds. See you tomorrow. What we have coming up tomorrow is a big day. So we have another free walking tour which gets us acquainted with the city. We are going to be visiting the biggest uh, a building of uh, kind of like big uh, 
political importance in Berlin, where the I, th I think like the Congress is or something like that. So we're going to talk about that, and um, and maybe we'll get to the Turkish market. So stay tuned tomorrow.